good afternoon and happy Sunday, folks. Thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of My Journey with Jesus. Today we'll talk about the nuts and bolts of mentoring. My name is Dave Little, and I am so happy that you have tuned into this broadcast today. I am not a professional pastor or professional speaker. I'm just a guy living in Madison, Wisconsin. And God has laid it on my heart to use my YouTube channel to discuss on a weekly basis my experiences walking imperfectly with Him. And the past couple of weeks, we have been on the topic of mentoring, how everybody should strive in their lives to have what we have referred to as a Paul, a Timothy, and a Barnabas, um, or mother, sister, daughter, uh, someone in your life who is more mature and, and guiding you and assisting you with your Christian walk from day to day is the Paul type person. The Barnabas being, of course, the co-worker, somebody that you are arm in arm with in working and walking in faith. And then someone like a Timothy, who is a younger person that you're mentoring and that you're building into through your life. And so we've talked about how that is a, uh, a notion that is strongly encouraged and supported in the Bible. And last week I talked about some of my personal experiences with mentoring, both as a mentor and as someone who is being mentored. And today we'll talk about the nuts and bolts of what mentoring is like and can be. Um, first, let's talk about getting started. The secret, the, the first secret to a successful mentoring relationship is to be available. Make mentoring a priority. If you are serving God, you should be willing to make time for other people in relationships that God has created for us. Uh, one pastor at my church says that the best way to tell the faithfulness of a Christian is to look at their calendar and their checkbook. Um, and if we make mentoring a priority, we will be available to those around us, both those who would serve us as mentors and those who need the leadership that a mentor can provide. In terms of seeking out mentors, I've read different things about this. I read something this week that said, don't ask somebody to be a mentor. Um, and I can't say that I agree with that. The guy that I am mentoring now sought me out and said, I want you to be my mentor. And I'm like, sure, we can you know, hang out and, and, and do stuff and talk. No, 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 I want you to be my mentor. And he was very, um, very specific in his request and so I said yeah we, we can uh, we can do this thing and that has worked out beautifully for both of us I think it would be more awkward to approach somebody and say I want to be your mentor because that you know has some presumptions attached to it but there are ways to do that within the context of a church or a small group or you know another venue where structured mentoring connections can be established. The uh, gentleman that I meet with who is my mentor uh, now is someone who uh, volunteered his services through the church that we both attend. And the church has kind of a mentor matching service. And when I contacted the church and said, I need a mentor because I have some life decisions and some issues that uh, would benefit from the wisdom of an older believer and just because we always need to have that influence in our lives spiritually then we were uh, paired together and it was awkward the first couple of times but once we have gotten to know each other it is uh, a beautiful thing that I look forward to doing every week and, and finally pray for God's guidance if you feel that God is calling you to become a mentor, pray on that. Pray what you would bring to that relationship and pray for the right person to uh, be part of that relationship. And the same thing is true if you are 
looking for a mentor, pray for God's guidance in that aspect as well. And you'll see this whole theme of prayer as being the underpinning of mentoring throughout a lot of what we discuss here today. Um, the two key things to getting established in a mentoring relationship that I have found, number one, be intentional. Number two, be consistent. What does being intentional mean? It just means focusing your time together. We are getting together on this occasion to do mentoring. Um, you know, the mistake you can make is Let's go out and have lunch, and we have an hour set aside. In the first 45 minutes, we spend, you know, chit-chatting about the weather and current events and sports and, and whatever. And, you know, then in the last 15 minutes, hey, did you want to do some of this mentoring stuff? The time that you spend in your mentoring relationships should be focused and committed to uh, the, the, the spiritual conversations upon which the mentoring relationship is based. Uh, make that time consistent. Uh, with my mentor, we have a uh, calendar date standing every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, and I love that time. And so we always know that 10 o'clock on Saturday morning is our time to be together. With the, uh, the guy I am mentoring, we work together and our schedules are less predictable from week to week, but at the end of each mentoring session, we make it a point to compare calendars and set the next mentoring session. And if we have to miss one or reschedule one, we're both committed to, to doing that right away rather than, you know, sorry, I can't make it on Tuesday. We'll get back in touch and reschedule that. And then, and then the next thing you know, two weeks have gone by, three weeks have gone by, and, you know, no connection has taken place. So if you be consistent in setting that time and intentional about how you're going to use that time, that will enable you to establish a more constructive and productive mentoring relationship. Um, so what are the uh, things that we do in, in mentoring? And again, it, it begins with the first priority being prayer. Um, praying together is, is such a gift, and I've been blessed so many times over the years with a variety of people that we just pray together, um, and that really strengthens the bonds of your relationship. It really helps you to get to know each other and how you feel about things and how you prioritize things and, and how, we, how we bring things before God really reflects our relationship with God, and so Praying together is, you know, the quintessential component of any mentoring time. Uh, there are other things you can build into that time. Um, some mentoring relationships involve former formal studies of scripture together. Uh, my mentor is very consistent about that. He has scripture resources that he has committed specifically to mentoring um, younger believers, and we walk through that together on a weekly basis, and it is a blessing. Um, the, uh, the man I am mentoring, uh, we do not, we, we have done, you know, s structured scripture studies together before. We're not currently doing one, but from week to week, we ask each other, uh, you know, where are you in the scripture and we share scripture with each other from our daily lives. Um, accountability is a great component of mentoring. And in fact, a lot of mentoring is specifically uh, designed around issues where accountability is necessary. We talked about this last week. Maybe it's exercise and diet. Maybe it is, um, you know, issues within a marriage. Maybe it's, you know, sin issues that, uh, that, that we need to be accountable to each other for. Um, but if there are specific targeted issues that need to be brought into the mentoring relationship in the form of accountability, that's another important component of a mentoring relationship. But the main, the main thing is that as mentors and as mentees, I guess you could call it, um, 
we're just people doing life together. Um, you know, I'm very blessed that me and the young man that I am mentoring have a great friendship. Um, we're both committed to our families. We're both committed to our professional lives. We're both committed to worshiping God and serving Him in our church. Um, and, and really, other than the age difference, we're just two guys doing life together. Um, I've been around a few years longer. And so, you know, he spends a lot of time picking my brain about my experiences. Um, and that is, uh, you know, I think something that benefits both of us because it keeps me on the top of my game knowing that, you know, my buddy's going to have questions for me this week. And it gives him the opportunity to uh, learn from my mistakes, which uh, I haven't always been able to learn from successfully. And that brings us into the, the, the keys to success. What makes a successful mentoring relationship? And the, and the two things that, that I put at the top of this list are being humble and being transparent. And these go hand in hand. Being a mentor doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. Um, it's more powerful as a mentor to show our warts and our weaknesses and, you know, hey, this is an issue where I struggle just as well. And, and it, is, uh, it is perfectly fine for the mentor to say, yeah, gosh, I struggle with these issues in my life. And, and, you know, we can pray together about that just as much as we pray together about the issues of the, uh, the younger believer. Um, and in fact, I'll, I'll tell a story about this. The, the young guy that I am mentoring is, is a coworker of mine. And there was a, a day, uh, gosh, it's been a few years ago. We were pretty early in our mentoring relationship and I had a situation at work that just blew up in my face and I was very, very worked up about it. And God blessed me with the ability that I was able to seek him out and say, dude, listen, I'm just beside myself here with frustration. Can we talk? Can we pray? And in that moment, he was really the one serving me and mentoring me and, and helping me walk through this situation and focus my response to the situation on God's word and God's will for, for both of our lives. And, and that was a moment that really helped us to connect, you know, more strongly and more powerfully um, because of the, uh, the willingness to be transparent and to be humble. This is not a, you know, the wise old master teaches the naive young um, Padawan, as it were, that, uh, you know, this is, this is how life is. I talk, you listen. Um, that's not as effective a model for mentoring as humility and being transparent and showing our warts to each other and walking through those warts together in ways that would enable the younger believer to see the older believer modeling. You know, this is what Christians do in times of distress. So, you know, being humble and being transparent, I, I think are very, very important traits of a mentoring relationship. Um, it is very important for the mentor to be a listener and not just a lecturer. And part of listening is asking questions. You know, what are the issues that this younger Christian is dealing with? And, and can we probe those issues in more detail? Um, if a question comes to mind, ask it. Uh, you know, don't feel like you need to be tactful or, um, you know, be, uh, be, be subtle. Um, you know, it's the role of a mentor to be, in a sense, confrontational. And it is the role of the person being mentored to be, to, to permit that. Um, the mentoring relationship works best when both, um, both the, uh, the leader and the disciple have permission to ask tough questions and a commitment to honestly answer 
tough questions. Um, and as the mentor, it is also important to ask follow-up questions. You know, hey, we had this discussion last week. Where have you been in the past week in response to the discussion we had last week? Uh, and that takes a lot of energy. And that's frankly something that I'm not very good at. Um, you know, I'm pretty good at being a problem solver in the moment, but in terms of following things through time, um, you know, remembering things through time, I find that a lot more challenging, um, not just in mentoring, but in, in every area of life. You know, I have to take very thorough notes on every work conversation I have, whether it's a meeting or a customer call or or, or what have you, I rely very heavily on my notes to jog my memory as to issues that I have discussed. And, um, you know, being a mentor is just the same thing. Um, and that leads to the most important component of mentoring, and that is prayer. Um, as a mentor, you should pray for your, your, your mentee on a daily basis basis. Um, and if that means, you know, keeping notes in your prayer journal or what have you, um, you know, God will give insights into how you can best serve your mentee if you bring those issues to him regularly and reflect on them regularly in prayer. Uh, so the essential component of a mentoring relationship is, is prayer. Uh, the mentoring relationship begins and ends with prayer and is bathed in prayer from start to finish, day to day, week to week. And, and I cannot overemphasize that. Um, so to, to wrap, the, wrap things up today, we'll go back to the same questions that I have been asking the last couple of weeks. Uh, who do you have in your life? Do you have a mentor? Do you have an accountability partner, someone that you're working alongside and doing life together? Do you have a Timothy, someone who is looking to you for guidance? Who are you accountable to? Uh, who is in your life that you can be transparent with and who will ask you those questions and, and those follow-ups and, and pray with you about the spiritual issues in which God is working in your life? Uh, what are you doing personally and professionally to be a Christian role model, to be a mentor? Is there a mentoring opportunity that God is pointing you to? Uh, so pray about those things in the days and weeks to come. And as we head into a new year and new opportunities, um, it's my prayer for you all that uh, God will bless your lives in mentoring relationships as he has blessed my life in, the, uh, in this past year in particular. Um, so with that, we will wrap things up. Uh, thank you all for listening. And I hope this has been a blessing to you. If you have questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment box below to uh, stimulate discussion. I don't see a lot of activity in the comments box from week to week, but I get enough feedback from people in my daily lives that, uh, that I'm encouraged that uh, God wants me to continue to produce these videos for, uh, for 2021 and beyond. Um, if you enjoy these videos, give it a like. And when you give this video a like, it triggers the YouTube algorithms so that other people who see, who, who come searching for inspiration or for um, video messages on YouTube that they may find valuable will be more likely to, to find this. If you want to keep up with these videos on a regular basis, feel free to hit the subscribe button below and you'll get notified whenever new content comes on to the channel. Um, that's all I have for this week. Thank you so much again for listening and we will see you next week with some reflections on Christmas and the, uh, and the closing of the year 2020 as next week will be the, uh, the last Sunday of the year. And until then, God bless you all and go in peace.